The opinions expressed in the following programs are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers nor Rogers TV. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of At the Heart of Business. I'm your host, Judith Tate. At the Heart of Business is a conversation with women in business discussing their challenges and successes. Our first guest today is Monique Bryan. Hi, Monique. Hi, Judith. How are you? I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm doing great. I can't wait to dive into this conversation. Yes, absolutely. So I'm just going to read this up because I don't want to mess it up. So you are a <laughs> personal brand strategist and CEO of Monique Bryan Worldwide Inc. So tell us all about that. That's a big title. And I know you do. You do a lot, and I just love watching your social media, uh, your videos, and you're very animated and very personable. So tell us all about it. Well, thank you for saying that because it means that I'm doing well with my brand and it's coming through through the screen, which is a challenge for a lot of business owners. So at so I am a personal brand strategist, and I help predominantly women who are the CEOs of their business step out from behind their business and step into the spotlight. So really those who are looking to establish their thought leadership in their industry, because today everybody wants to know who they're giving their money to. Those days of faceless brands is over. And a lot of people realize that as business owners. So what I do is I make sure that their digital footprint online is something that looks trustworthy. It looks aligned with their pricing and it sets them up for the opportunities that they really want to go after. That is that is really great. And I love how you put it. People want to know who they're giving their money to. Yes. And it's so true because we are so much more informed now than even 10 years ago. Right? Absolutely. And Absolutely. you really have to stand out as a business owner. You really got to stand out because there is so much competition. And yeah, you, you just got to stand it, out. So it's and, amazing. And it's e it's even more competitive since COVID happened because what happened was it was everybody was a business owner out here online. Then COVID happened. People realized, I don't want to go back to work. I want to start a business. So everybody started a business. There were so many people leaving their jobs or they were creating a side hustle. My business actually exploded during COVID because a lot of people were like, oh my gosh, I finally know what I want to do. I don't want to go into my office anymore. I've had time to think. So now the business owners who are seasoned are competing with new entrepreneurs who may or may not be here in the next few years, but they're out here on social media, creating websites, um, making themselves look like they've been here forever when that's not the case. So business owners have to step up with their personal brand. Yeah. And I like how you say that because I noticed that myself, it's just like someone coming onto the scene and it's like, oh my goodness, she's only been around for like six months and she's got like 5,000 followers and she's like, <laughs> killing it. And I'm just like, how are people doing this? So that, that's great. And how do you help people that way? So one of the things we do is we look at your brand voice, your identity, how you show up online. So a lot of people come to me and what they say in their intake form is, I don't know what to say on social media. I don't know what to do. And a lot of the a lot of the, the the reason behind that a lot of the times is because they don't know what they want to say or what I like to say what hill you want to die on. All everybody wants to know where do you stand with things? What do you think? And what I help them do is really whittle down like their top 6 buckets of thought leadership they want to share out here online. And then we only build things around those things because so many people are like, I'm multifaceted. Don't put me in a box. I want to talk about everything. And the challenge with that is people who are your potential buyers don't know when to call on you because you're talking about all the things. So we make sure that we're like, we streamline their communication. We streamline their, their visual communication as well as their written communication. Because I mean, I hate to say we're all judging a book by its cover, but we are right. So yeah. I make sure that how they look visually and their vision and their written communication is aligned. That's amazing. So do you just do that by uh, like one-on-one -on -one coaching or do you have a, a program or do you have like a team? Like how does, what does that look like? 
all of the above. So I okay. put them inside of a 90 day container for people who want to move really fast. And that involves coaching. We do content strategy days. I bring in a photographer, videographer, social media strategist. Uh, it's really curated per by client because it really depends where you are in your journey. So you could do a fast track in 90 days or we work together for the year and we build out each piece as we go, depending on what you want to be doing. So if say you want to be a speaker, for example, we build out your speaker toolkit and that requires a photo shoot that requires coaching. Um, it requires bringing in some other experts to help you get there. Uh, but that's, that's what we do. Oh, wow. I love it. That's great. Now you said that your business blew up during COVID. So go ahead and, and tell us about your why, why would you dive into this? So one of the things, my, my own personal story um, really has put me on the mission to do what I do today. So I am six years in remission from breast cancer. And when I was diagnosed, I was, I had just shut down another business I had built. And I was like, Oh, maybe I'm not good at this anymore. You know what, just forget it. I'm going to go and work at a regular job. And when I was diagnosed, it really like pushed me into reality, which was you don't have all the time in the world, you know, whatever failure you had before money doesn't matter. What do you want to do now? What change do you want to make for yourself and for the people who you interact with and you come in contact with? And while I was sharing my story online, because I documented my entire journey, I met a lot of women who were like, thank you for sharing your story. Like, I'm not ready to share it on a platform like yours, but I know now that there's hope at the end of this tunnel. And I was like, okay, there are these women who want to share their story, but they don't have a presence like I did. They don't have the audience and they don't know anything about marketing to get it out there. And it was a shame because they're amazing at what they did but nobody is going to hear them. So that's what pushed me into personal branding. And it's been driving me ever since because our story is the juice, right? It is our brand. There's no one else who has our story. And if when we know how to weave it into our messaging, people will follow the business on a whole different level because they're like, Girl, I like you. You know what? Your story and my story is like the same story. Yep, we share the same values. If when I go to spend money on that, I'm going to hire you. Wow. I love it. That's that's just great. <laughs> and it's so it's so true. And there is there's no point in having a great business but being the best kept secret because if people can't see you and if they can't find you, they can't buy from you. So then you have no business they can't buy from you. You have no business and you don't get to go help all the people you are out to help. That's like the right. people, the people I work with want to make a difference. They want to make an impact, but you can't do that if nobody knows you. That's right. I agree. So you mentioned that you had another business that you shut down. What, what, <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> Tell us about that. And I like that you mentioned that because what, not every business that you start is going to succeed, but you shouldn't, you shouldn't be discouraged. So tell us about that. Yes. I'm a big advocate for experimentation, you know, as whatever business you're out to start today may not be the business you end up with. And that was definitely the case. So my background is in product development. I left my six figure income working for a national retailer to start my own business. I was like, I can do this better than my boss. Your old self. Absolutely <laughs> not. I lost all my savings and like soul crushing everything. <laughs> like I was like, oh my gosh. So I actually have had two or three other businesses. I'm, I'm going to give two and a half before this <laughs> business I have today. So I had a costume jewelry business, which I sold. I sold products internationally. Um, working with a physical product is very different than consulting. I learned that very quickly that I don't want to physically make things with my hands. I want to help other people launch their stuff into the world. So then I joined a startup and I became the COO of a startup and we ended up selling that company. And that was fine and great. But again, I was left with, um, what am I supposed to do now? 
And then I went on and I started a business. I started being a business consultant, which is what my business is today. It has morphed into personal branding. But as I was out being a business consultant, you know, I was trying all of the things. And I actually had a friend of mine say, you know, Monique, I really want to be honest with you. I think you're doing too much. Everyone else knows you do personal branding. Can you just own it and like go to town? And when she did that, like a light bulb went off. I was like, oh, yes. If I focus in one area, I'm not put in this big pool of business coaches, which is what was happening at the time. Everybody was a business coach, but mm -hmm. I didn't know any personal branding coaches at all. So I started researching that, diving into the pioneers of this industry. And I started seeing like, I'm like, this is the future, right? Like, it's not just about the influencers and the YouTube stars who are going to put their information and their face out here online. It's going to be the people who are trying to sell you their business. So that that's how I ended up in personal branding. And when it happened, I was like, oh, this is where I'm meant to be. You know, when you get that feeling, you're like, this feels 100% aligned. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's great. And there's something to be said about niching down. So you found your niche. You niche down yes. to blow up. Yes. Yeah. Please, please, please. If anything you put out on here, tell everybody to niche down. Everyone is so afraid to do that. And it yeah. is the answer to mm -hmm. finding your the people who need you, to getting your foot in the door for the opportunities that you want. Because people need to put you in a box in their mind. They need to know, when do I hire you? And yes. why you? Why are you? You're specialized in something. What is that thing? It's so important. It's what's really preventing a lot of people from growing in their business because they're trying to be everything to everyone. Yes, I agree 100%. So women showing up online have a lot mm -hmm. of hesitation around that. Why do we do that to ourselves? We are just living in the world. We don't want the judgment. We don't want the trolls in our, in our comments. We don't want family members being like, who does she think she is? It's a big issue. So everybody is hiding. They don't want to make a mistake publicly. And they see what happens when you do make a mistake publicly. Like we are living in the world of cancel culture, okay? You cannot say anything wrong without people coming for you. So everybody is scared. And I can understand that, but we can't let the fear dictate our future, our future selves, the future. I always say, don't take the don't take the food out of my future children's mouths. Like that's what's happening when we are too afraid to put ourselves up at issue, which there's ways to do it that are authentic to you, that make you feel like good and aligned and maybe not even so exposed. People think if I come out here online, I have to share my whole life. And that is not true. What you put out here online is a curated experience for people, not a fake experience, a curated experience. You don't need to share every nitty, nitty gritty thing like we're the Kardashians. We're not the Kardashians. We don't need to share all of that. You want yeah. to choose things to share that will help the audience, that will give value to other people, but also feel authentic to you. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Monique. This was such a lovely conversation, which I know is going to inspire and help other women in business. Thank you for having me, Judith. And to our viewers, stay tuned. We will be speaking with Daisy next of Daisy Rodales of uh, PR Service. Brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit Rogers.com for more details. Connection. We all need it. We live for it. It makes us feel like we're a part of something bigger. It makes us laugh, cry, 
and scream out for the world to hear. Connecting Canadians has been our focus for over 60 years, and it's just the beginning. This is Rogers TV. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to At the Heart of Business. I'm your host, Judith Tate. At the Heart of Business is a conversation with women in business discussing their challenges and successes. Our next guest is Daisy Rodales. And Daisy is the founder, PR, and digital marketing strategist of DRPR Inc. Hello, Daisy, and welcome. Hi, Judith. It's nice to see you and be here. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for joining us. So tell us all about your business. Yes. So DRPR, it actually stands for my name, Daisy Rodales Public Relations. We are located in Ajax and we actually offer three key services to businesses. Um, this includes startups and established businesses. And our services are in branding, uh, public relations and digital marketing. So encompassing all of these services, our main mission is to help businesses leverage their online presence, to grow their brand and to attract the customers and clients that they want. Love it. So do you, um, like who would your, your client be? Like it's more small business, medium to large business owners. What type of clients do you have? Yeah, so actually we do cater to all businesses of all sizes and across multiple different industries. Um, so this does include startups typically between one year and up, um, but we do also work with larger corporations. Our main services right now, I would say are social media marketing. So 90% of our clients are engaged with us in that service, um, but we do also offer public relations based on you know campaigns. Um, and we do also offer email marketing, website development. So all those types of digital services as well, we do cover. Um, and I could share a little bit about some of the businesses we're working with right now, but we do work with, um, you know, beauty businesses, hair salons located here in Durham region, skincare salons. Um, we also work with economic development agencies. So we're actually working with the Stratford Center for Business as well, supporting them with their social media um, and really just a whole range of different industries we touch. And really our main mission is just to help entrepreneurs sort of grow, but also learn how they can also use these tactics to um, grow themselves as well. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So you've got clients as far as Stratford. Yes, we do. Actually, we work with um, Invest Stratford and the Stratford Perth Center for Business, supporting them with social media. Um, we do also have one client that's in the States and they're an event planning business. Uh, so we do also you know, work with businesses outside of Ontario. Uh, but I would say, you know, the bulk of our, our uh, support does um, cater to local businesses in Durham region, but, you know, we can pretty much support anyone and anywhere. That's amazing. And that's the beauty of the online world. 100%. Now, how long have you been doing this business? Yes. So I've actually had this business now for three years. We'll hit the three-year mark in August. So I'm very much, uh, yeah, excited for that and looking forward to it. Um, and uh, we actually did begin in the brink of COVID. So August, 2020, you know, when the pandemic was in full fledged and um, sort of the whole reason why I started this business was actually because um I initially, initially loved helping businesses. I loved helping entrepreneurs. I loved learning about their stories and hearing about, you know, them and, and how they got started. And so I actually, out of university, was working with a startup. Uh, they were brand new as well. They were two years in operation. And I was able to kind of be a part of that launch. Um, I helped them even with their uh, opening of their brick and mortar office, which was amazing. Um, and that was kind of when I was more so involved in the entrepreneurship space and I was like oh maybe this is something that I can achieve um, and so that's sort of kind of like how I got involved in the space and shortly after I actually got laid off uh, that's how it sort of happened and in that time I was like what do I do how do I apply for you know um, different types of jobs so once I um, had started applying for different positions I managed to get um, um, uh, a message from one of my old college professors. And he actually was the one that told me, you know, hey, there's a position uh, with the business center of Durham. 
<laughs> and so I yeah. And so I was actually, you know, fully on board. I decided to uh, apply. I, I applied part-time and that's where I met Teresa Shaver, which is the okay. CEO, which you may or may not know. And yeah. she was the reason why I started. She was the one that said, you know what, you should start a business. I see the potential. Um, and so I took the jump just from, from that sort of conversation. Oh, that's amazing. Teresa is awesome. Like she's, she's been there from the beginning of my business journey. Um, and the business advisory center of Durham, like they, they were just amazing. Like they helped me to get going and, and Teresa was a big part of that too. So good for you. Amazing. She's the best. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, she really is. <laughs> so, um, you mentioned that you, you like you got laid off and then, you know, that kind of inspired you or motivated you motivated you to start your business mm -hmm. what like what what were you feeling at the time because that was a very stressful and, and you know intense time for everybody and not everyone can actually go into business ownership mm -hmm. so what what were you feeling at the time or what were the challenges around that in that transition yeah that actually was Definitely, I would say one of the hardest moments of my life, um, being laid off, I was working ever since I was like 15. And I nonstop was working. So once you know, that happened, I was it was really, I was really in a bad place. Like I didn't know what to do with myself. I was never not working or never not doing something. So in that time, it was more of me kind of figuring out what I wanted to do with my future, where I kind of saw myself. Um, and that's when I started to do freelance as well. So I was kind of freelancing, you know, going on these sites, trying to see how I could help other businesses with marketing. Um, and I think just the moment was when I had met Teresa and I kind of also landed that part-time sort of position. It aligned also with what I was doing, which was digital marketing. And she was, you know, the reason that she said, you know, you should just start. And I was at first, I was like, no, that's too hard, you know, or like, no, I don't know if I see myself doing that. Um, but of course, like with their support and, and they do have like these free workshops and services where they can advise you um, with that, you know, support as well. I was able to do it. And I said, you know what, if all these other women, if all these other people are starting their own business and they've done it and they're growing, I can do it too. And so um, mm. that actually played a, a huge role for me. Oh, yay. Love it. Yes. Love to hear that. Yes. And that's what other women need to hear as well. They need to hear that it's possible regardless of what your circumstances are. It's possible. And there's going to be different different timelines you know some some people can you know I don't know it could be like three months before they get they get going some people it could be a year but the whole thing is you got to be very persistent 100 percent. and and I would definitely say like having that strong supportive circle around you is yeah. key I think to just even being able to to, you know, be inspired all the time, motivated. And sometimes, you know, other people see the the potential in us that we may not even realize in the moment. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And what would you say is like probably one of your most proudest moments in your, your business? Yeah. So actually my proudest moment was incorporating. So uh, we did incorporate Yay. as of last year. Yay. Yes. Yay. Good. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so that was a very, very exciting time for me. I think the moment that that happened, I realized, you know what, my business is actually much bigger than I even imagined it could get to. Um, I think before, you know, sort of launching and starting everything sort of new and you're sort of just navigating the space. I mean, and being an entrepreneur is, is no easy, you know, feed. It's, it's a very challenging thing to do, but I think that was the moment that I was like, you know what, I, I can even grow my business further than I thought I could grow it. And mm -hmm. I could keep achieving the things that I, that I, you know, have set out for myself and that was the moment that I was like, you know what, this is the first kind of major milestone. And from here, there's just more growth. And I'm definitely excited to continue to grow the team and to get support as well. Oh, great. And yeah. how did you know that that was the right move for you? at that time in your business? Yes, that's a great question. So actually, I mean, I will say it was a struggle kind of figuring out like 
is this the right moment? Um, I did reach out to, uh, I had a business coach at the time. So he was the one that actually had um, advised me, you know, I think you're ready for this. And I was fully transparent with him from, you know, the inception of, of our relationship, just kind of telling him where I was at in my business. Um, and also from there, I was like, you know, what, I still want to make sure. So I had reached out to a couple, um, you know, accountants as well, and just other business um, businesses in my circle at uh, business owners and entrepreneurs. And I asked them, the ones that, you know, also were incorporated, like, how did you get into this? Or how did you know? Um, and it all sort of seemed to align. And I was like, you know what, I think I just have to go for it and not be afraid. And, you know, once I did it, I was like, this is, you know, this is one of the greatest milestones for sure. Yeah, I agree. Good for you. Thank and that just you. shows that uh, you're pretty resourceful. So you reach out to your community, reach out to people who have traveled the same path as you, mm -hmm. you know, to find the answers. And then that way you actually save yourself a lot of time and headache and even a lot of money, right? Rather than spending a whole bunch of money trying to figure things out. You just ask people. 100%. I think asking is like the greatest thing and it could get you so far. And that's actually also a huge uh, reason of, of why I even started too, was because I was asking other people that I knew that had businesses, like, how did you get started? Or what did you do? Could you guide me? And I think having that support, like really made it more, um, it made it more, it was stressful, but it was not as, you know, difficult as I thought it would be when I had that support. And when I was able to go to my peers and my colleagues and um, other entrepreneurial friends and and sort of get guidance and advice. I think that was a huge, uh, amazing thing for me. That's great. I love it. So what words of advice would you have for someone who wants to get into your field or your industry? Yeah, so I would definitely say don't be afraid to take risks and don't be afraid to just start. I think the biggest thing for entrepreneurs uh, is usually just starting. Like that's the biggest hurdle that you can overcome. There's so much self-doubt that comes with it. There's so much imposter syndrome. Um, I had that and I think that's why I, I held off for so long even though I knew it was kind of possible for so long, I was like, no, I'm not going to do it. No, I'm not ready. And I kept pushing it until I did it. And once you do it, it's like, you know what, it's not as, it's not, a, it's not as difficult as, you know, you think in your head. And I think that's the greatest um, thing that I did is just taking the risk. And I would definitely say the same for others who want to start a business. Just don't be afraid. Don't doubt yourself. Um, also one thing I will say is that there's only one of you, right? So if you think that, you know, you don't have anything that you can bring to the table, like don't ever think that because we are all unique in our own way and we can all bring something to the table that nobody else can. Mm -hmm. I love that. That is so, <laughs> that is so true. And I think that is something that everyone needs to hear regardless of whether they're in business or not. Like you, you have something we all have our own unique gifts to offer to the world. Yeah. So we need to get out there and share them. So 100,000%. That's great. Well, thank you so much, Daisy, for joining us today. This is a lovely conversation. It was okay. nice to have you on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very happy to be here and I really appreciate the opportunity. Great. And thanks to our viewers for watching. Tune in next time for another episode of At The Heart of Business. TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. Today, I helped a senior find transportation to an important medical appointment. Today, I helped a new mom find virtual programming so she didn't feel so isolated. 